When I read as much as I could about Star Johnson, there's not much background on him. But there's varying descriptions of what occurred. So I've heard many different versions of the story. It's a story that's made for TV. I thought it was made up. It, it seems so um, unbelievable, the story itself. He was a police officer. Uh, he was a soldier. He lost his life in the line of duty. Uh, shot by another officer who was off duty at the time. Vinnie Cole did the uh, historical research to find out that we had an officer who was shot and killed in the line of duty that we'd never recognized. This is a very, very complex chain of events that occurred prior to the death, during the death, and even after. I just found that it was just an amazing story. So when I learned that it was a little more than what we all thought, I looked into it a little further. It only made sense to make that recognition uh, to Star Johnson and his family. It should be an awakening for us. Now, what is important as we honor our history and honor our fallen. When I heard the story and, and learned of the situation, it got a full brief, I knew that we had to do the right thing because there's never a wrong time to do the right thing, and that's what we're doing in this situation. I had a sergeant by the name of Vincent Cole we would bounce history off of each other. The story of Star Johnson came up and he seemed very enthused about this to the point that I'm gonna have to dig up some more information. I'm gonna go research this. Uh, Vinny is our uh, department uh, historian and I also work alongside him with the, at the Phoenix Police Museum, uh, which I'm also involved in the museum. And um, Vinny gave me copies of a, a police report uh, from 1944. The only known photograph I ever found of Star is a group photo um, of the entirety of the Phoenix Police Department at the time the photo was taken. And this particular photo is interesting in the sense of the story surrounding Star's death had three major players in it and they're all photographed in the same photo. You had Officer Star Johnson, Officer Johnson's partner that day, Joe Davis, and the person that shot and killed Star, Detective Frenchy Navarre. A lot of this research was done by retired Lieutenant Rob Septembre. Uh, Lieutenant Septembre was successful in getting Star recognized at the state level at our memorial at Wesley Bowen Plaza. As the designated unofficial type historian for the department, what I would do is I, was, uh, I would interview the old timers, the officers from the 40s and 50s. And Vinny was very interested in this. He had heard of this, he wanted to know the story, he wanted to know what my involvement was. And we always knew, a, knew about a story, officers from the 60s on forward, of a police officer that shot and killed another police officer. We have lost a lot of police officers in the line of duty since the beginning of this department. Um, officer Johnson was the second officer that was killed in the line of duty. Uh, he was the first African-American officer that had lost his life. If you think about that time back in 1944, um, Phoenix was a lot different, uh, a lot different place back then than it is now. And um, the country was going through a lot. It was going through World War II over a month before um, D-Day. The conversation of, of how separated and segregated and divide, divided this country was based on the color of one's skin during those times, you know, it, it, it was, it was very clear that there was a limited number of African-American officers in this organization, that they were limited to the area and scope with which they could work and where they could work. And their beat was 1st Street to uh, 16th Street from Van Buren to Jackson. They were making arrests. And when I looked into the old records, they were actually out recapping the whole Phoenix Police Department and arrests, and they were making a lot of them. My goal was to remain objective and to look at the facts that exist that uh, were presented in the official records, the primary source documents. And you spend that much time digging into a person, you start to feel like you know them, and that's the great part of history. It's the business of bringing the, those who can't speak anymore, bringing them back to life. And because this occurred in 1944, we do have some primary source documents that we can review. Those are now the keeper of the story, so it's incumbent upon the uh, historians out there and, and those of us who are interested to dig into those records to try to figure out the truth as, as far as what happened and how it happened. 
in May of 1944, Starr and Joe Davis were working together as partners in the, on a walking beat in the downtown Phoenix area where they observed a traffic violation of a vehicle. Now there's some debate as to who was in that vehicle at the time of the violation, but ultimately the vehicle was stopped and uh, Detective uh, Frenchy Navari comes into the picture. Now, if he does that as a driver or as a person who observed the stop, no one knows. But what is known is that Officer Davis stepped away from the traffic stop and walked into a local business. Officer Johnson recognized that the officer that had the traffic violation was an off-duty officer. And that may explain why he went by himself where his partner went into the, the local store. And so I'm assuming he felt safe because he had made a traffic stop on a, another officer. But it also tells you a lot about uh, Officer Johnson's character that he was going to address it. At some point in time, uh, there was an argument. And the argument was over um, whether Johnson was going to give that ticket, um, whether Navari was going to talk to the chief the next day about it. Uh, and then um, it sounds like our Detective Navari told him to just move along, to just go about his business and leave him alone. But Starr was adamant. You ran the stop sign. Frenchy said no. And it went downhill from there. That resulted in Navari opening fire on Star. Star fled the uh, area after being shot and collapsed into a nearby business. He was transported to a local hospital where he later died. A few days later, uh, Officer Navari was charged with murder and was um, arrested. Uh, there is a trial. Uh, during that trial, there are several witnesses that are interviewed and uh, the justification provided by the off-duty officer is something to the effect of he called me a son of a bitch and I don't take that from nobody and then he uses a derogatory slur uh, reference Officer Johnson's race. Uh, in 1944 that was enough to get him a hung jury the first time uh, and then ultimately he's acquitted in, in round two, uh, the second trial. Joe Davis was Starr's partner, apparently a very close one, and, and Joe Davis was pretty upset by the time uh, this happened and they actually put Frenchy back to work. And he's working in the Phoenix Police Headquarters building at the time at 17 South 2nd Street when uh, he steps out of his office to get a drink of water and is confronted by Joe Davis in the hallway and shot and killed by Joe Davis. Joe Davis goes to trial for the homicide. It's a hung jury. Joe Davis goes to trial again for the homicide after the hung jury and they find him guilty of manslaughter. And then he was released after a couple of years on parole. And, uh, and that was about it, end of story. Although I served for 20 years, uh, I was not even aware of the incident involving Star Johnson until one of my former subordinates, uh, Rob September, brought it to my attention. And when Rob brought it to me, I was a little bit embarrassed that I was unaware of it. It gave me great pride that Rob, a white officer, wanted to push this forward. Officer Johnson was a good police officer doing his job that day. Uh, officer Johnson and Officer Davis were very hardworking officers. That they, they worked a walking beat. They knew the people who were, that lived and worked in their beat. And they, they also you know, were big on uh, addressing and impacting crime. So ultimately, no matter how much time has passed, it's important for us as a department uh, and a city to recognize uh, star sacrifice. Again, it happened 80 years ago, and there was a lot of pieces to the puzzle that took some digging to put together. But once we were able to successfully do this, this is the right thing to do. When we look at the totality of this incident in its journey from its inception to the finality of it, what a lot of us have tried to really do over the course of the time we've had these conversations centered in this event is really focus on the facts as we know them, the history as we know it, related to the circumstances of a Phoenix police officer who's on duty, in uniform, performing his mission, um, and ends up losing his life at, to gunfire. One of the big parts of the police culture is uh, honoring and recognizing those who have given the ultimate sacrifice for their community. And um, it's long overdue for Officer Johnson. So there's a lot of things that we'll be able to do to honor him. Uh, hopefully we'll, we're working towards uh, a street sign where um, that will mark uh, where he lost his life. The city has stepped up to the plate 
has swung that bat. And so we're going to now do something about it. So now on a national level, he's being recognized. Had he not made that sacrifice, first of all, to become a police officer back then when there wasn't many African American being uh, in that industry, out here in Phoenix with the racial tensions and everything else that that provided, um, how important that is uh, to, for me now as being the executive assistant chief to recognize that sacrifice and know that because off of his sacrifice, I, that's the only reason I'm here today. And then the big thing is that he's going to be added to the law enforcement memorial wall in Washington, D.C. Uh, this May. Occasionally, they'll list somebody who had died from years prior that was recently discovered. This year, uh, Star is going to be one of those names. When I became an officer, the first thing I paid a lot of attention is the faces that were at that time were on the wall of the police building of people who were given their lives in the Phoenix Police Department. That's important to officers. There's tremendous lessons for all of us. What spawns out of these tough conversations is, is usually righteousness. Um, and so um, let this be an example um, for the history of this organization, for the present of this organization, and the future leaders of this organization to have the courage and the wisdom to make sure that we're doing the right thing um, for those that have served us at such a high level and, and been involved in the ultimate sacrifice. Now, Officer Johnson has been recognized for a number of years at the state level, um, but I think it's very important that we enshrine his name in Washington, D.C. on the police memorial. So the rest of the nation knows about this story.